Hello, welcome to part 38 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Here, we will be discussing day-to-day -day clinical scenarios with detailed explanation. Let's move to our course number 186. A patient with stroke affecting the right medial cerebellar artery has difficulty in walking, especially over uneven surface. Which of the following describe the most appropriate initial treatment to improve the patient's ability to walk over uneven surface? Oceanic. Place a single point gate in patient's left hand and train him to use a step to gait pattern. Option B. Place a single point gate in patient's right hand and train him to use step to gait pattern. Option C. Fit the patient with a four wheeled walker and instruct him to use four point gait pattern. Option D. Fit the patient with axillary crutches and instruct him to use a four point gait pattern. And answer is. Option B. Place a single point cane in patient's right hand and train him to use step 2 gait pattern. Explanation to this question is The question indicates that the patient has difficulty with uneven surface, implying that even the surfaces are not as difficult. Thus, using a SPC with a swing to gait pattern would be the most correct initial treatment. Option A. This answer is correct except for the hand placement. With a stroke in right MCA, the patient's left side will be affected, requiring the cane to be in right hand. Option C. This answer is a distractor. You can't use a four-wheeled walker to create four-point gait pattern. Option D. Axillary crutches would be possible. However, the four-point gait pattern is typically used for patients with very low tolerance of ambulation and would not be ideal for transferring the uneven terrain. Also, it is not specified, but the stroke patients often have both the lower extremity and upper extremity affected, making it difficult to negotiate the axillary crutches. Now let's move to question number 187. A 45-year-old male patient to burn unit with partial thickness burn over the entire right arm, left arm, front of head and front of chest. Approximately what percentage of his body is burned? Option A 31.5% Option B 36% Option C 40.5% Option D 45% And answer is Option C 40.5% Explanation to this question is The question requires knowledge of the rule of 9 and their arm is 9% and their left arm is 9% Friend of the head is 4.5%, friend of the chest is 18%, total is 40.5%. Now let's move to question number 188. A patient with complete T10 paraplegia is receiving his initial ablation training. He has received bilateral crack scored knee ankle foot orthosis and is trained with axillary crutches. Since his reciprocal gait pattern is problematic for him, the best initial gait pattern to teach him is Option A 4 point, Option B swing through, Option C swing to, Option D 2 point and the answer is Option C swing to. Explanation to this question is A swing to gait pattern is indicated to individual with limited use of both lower extremity and trunk instability. It is lower and more stable than the swing through gait pattern. A gait pattern this patient can be progressed to after his initial training. This patient is unable to perform a reciprocal gait. Now let's move to question number 189. A physical therapist observes a patient from behind during bilateral shoulder abduction and notes that the patient's right scapula is more abducted than the left scapula at the end range of the movement. Which of the following condition is most likely cause of altered scapular position on the right? Option A. Tightness of the rhomboid major and minor. Motion B. Weakness of the sagittus anterior. Option C. Restricted motion of the glenohumeral joint. Option D. Weakness of the upper trapezius. And answer is Option C. Restricted motion of the glenohumeral joint. Explanation to this question is 
tightness of the rhomboid major and minor would promote the downward rotation of the scapula. Weakness of serratus anterior would limit the upward rotation of the scapula. The most likely reason for increase in scapular motion is restriction of glenohumeral joint. To fully abduct the shoulder, the scapula and the glenohumeral joint both have to contribute to the motion. If the glenohumeral joint is restricted, the scapula has to increase its motion to accomplish the task. Weakness of the upper trapezius would demonstrate a scapular lag in upward rotation. Now let's go to question number 190. A physiotherapist attempts to secure a wheelchair for a patient with a incomplete spinal cord injury. The patient is 31 year old female that is very active and relies on the wheelchair as her primary mode of transportation. The type of wheelchair design that would be most appropriate is Option A. Standard chair with folding frame Option B. Standard chair with rigid frame Option C. Lightweight chair with folding frame Option D. Lightweight chair with rigid frame And the answer is Option D. Lightweight chair with rigid frame Explanation to this question is A lightweight wheelchair is easier to maneuver and propel. The rigid frame will allow for smoother and stable ride while the stainless steel or aluminum chair will enhance durability. So that's all for today. If you have any doubts, please mention in the comment box. For further learning, keep in touch with the channel. See you in the next part. That's part 39. Bye bye. See you. Thank you.